From 1914 to 1954, the Minneapolis and St. Paul campuses of the University of Minnesota were connected by a streetcar line. Its purpose was to transport students between the two campuses and also to bring railroad freight cars into the St. Paul campus. U of M engineering students surveyed the line, which consisted of two blocks of track entering the Minneapolis campus from the intersection of 15th Avenue Southeast and 4th Street in Dinkytown. It used the existing tracks of the Como Harriet line as far as the corner of Como Avenue and Eustis, just entering St. Paul. From there, a new single track line was built, running along Eustis Street for a block north, and then turning east. It entered a long ravine, then passed along the north side of the University Grove Faculty Housing Development, passed under Cleveland Avenue, and then made a big sweeping curve around the north side of the St. Paul campus through the agricultural test fields. And then it ended at a loop in the St. Paul campus just east of the academic buildings. Beyond the loop were spur tracks reaching the power plant for the St. Paul campus, the destination for coal cars. Although it appeared to be part of the regular streetcar system, the University of Minnesota owned the intercampus line and Twin City Rapid Transit Company ran it under contract. Now we're going to make a round trip on the intercampus line, starting at the St. Paul campus, going to the Minneapolis campus and returning. Passengers boarded at a turn loop on the east side of the campus, kind of between the academic buildings and the livestock barns. The motorman shuts the doors and releases his air brake. and opens up the controller and off we go. There you can see one of the livestock barns on the right. Another sequence coming around the turn loop. After passing the livestock barns, the line made a long left-hand curve around the north side of the campus, passing through the agricultural test fields. There's a boxcar on the siding. This line actually hauled freight and uh, delivered freight cars to the St. Paul campus. Here we are passing the switch to that same siding that held the boxcar. Leaving the campus itself, the streetcar made a stop at Cleveland Avenue and is shown here passing under Cleveland. Between the two campuses, the streetcar has made a couple of three different stops to pick up uh, university students. And looking west from Cleveland. We're looking back at Cleveland Avenue. We're headed behind the University Grove, which was housing for faculty of the University of Minnesota, and they did make a stop for the Grove.
Now we're starting to head down the ravine that leads to Eustace Street. The conductor is collecting fares as the car moves along. There were no free transfers between the inner campus line and the rest of the streetcar system. Instead, there was a three cent fare, and most students paid with a punch card. Here we are headed down the ravine by the U Grove. And now the streetcar is approaching Eustace Street. The switch in the foreground, the straight ahead, leads to the freight interchange track of the Minnesota Transfer. The streetcar, as you can see here, takes the turn, 90 degree turn, to parallel Eustace Street for a block down to Como Avenue. Here's the same shot in color. And there was a little passing siding just north of Como where the two intercampus cars can meet. This is looking back along Eustace at the passing siding. Once again, we're meeting the other uh, intercampus car. This was the regular meeting point. And we're turning on to Como Avenue. And we just turned on to Como Avenue, which was shared with the Como Harriet line from Eustace Street to 4th Street Southeast. Taking the curve that goes under what is today Highway 280. There was an intermediate stop at 29th Avenue for student housing and another stop, I believe, at 18th Avenue South. That's the fare register in the back of the car. This is looking east on Como at about mm, 25th Avenue South. And now we're approaching 4th Street Southeast. And this is where you can see the Como Harriet line turning off to the left. And we go straight ahead for two blocks into the campus. Now we're entering the campus on the median of 15th Avenue and entering the turn loop to turn around at the campus. And this required crossing the stream of automobiles a couple of times. As originally built, the streetcars on the Minneapolis campus turned around at a Y, just beyond the Mechanic Arts Building. Backing streetcars around the Y was cumbersome, so sometime between 1930 and 1936, the intersection of 15th and Pillsbury was reconstructed as a roundabout, with the streetcars making a turn loop, made it much easier to reverse directions to return to St. Paul. Here the streetcar comes around the loop, and it makes the stop at Falwell Hall where it laid over for a few minutes before returning to the St. Paul campus. Another car crosses University Avenue, passing the U of M YMCA. This was close to the end of service in 1954, and the streetcars were looking pretty tired by this time. Prior to about 1950, Twin City Lines never would have let their streetcars look this bad. The management that got rid of the streetcars, they cut the maintenance. And well-dressed students bored to go back to the St. Paul campus.
will follow a trip back to the St. Paul campus. After traveling two blocks on its own rails, it reaches 4th Street Southeast, where it rejoins the tracks that it shares with the Como Harriet Line. A few blocks later, it passed under the Great Northern Railroad and 15th Avenue Southeast angled to the north. Two blocks later, the streetcar turned from 15th Avenue onto Como Avenue. At 29th and Como, the university owned a large vacant piece of land. And on that piece, after World War II, it constructed temporary housing with Quonset huts and metal buildings for returning veterans who attended the University of Minnesota under the GI Bill. The inner campus line made a stop here to serve them. Now we're going north along Eustace Street and we're making the turn to go up the ravine. And now we're headed up the ravine. This is the University Grove stop. It was at the base of a long stairway. Stairway is still there, as is the pad for the shelter. Crossing Kaufman Street by the U Grove with Cleveland Avenue in the distance. And we're making a stop for the U Grove. Here's Cleveland Avenue looking west at an approaching eastbound car. and passing under Cleveland. This is the long curve leading through the farm fields on the north edge of the campus. The track was a little rough as you'll see in a couple of following shots. And here the car is going through the ag fields. Approaching that siding where the freight car was kept. And as you can see, the track was kind of rough. The car is rocking. You'll really see that in the next shot. Now we're on the car, approaching the livestock barns. And a couple of long tracking shots passing the barns. The streetcar enters the turn loop at the St. Paul campus. And approaches the final stop. And that's the end of the trip. This is the freight motor. 
that Twin City Lines built, and it called freight cars to and from the St. Paul campus. Freight cars were picked up at the Minnesota Transfer Railway Interchange, just west of today's Highway 280. Here's a freight car crossing Eustis Street, joining the regular inner campus line. And here's the siding for boxcars and other miscellaneous freight next to the livestock barns on the St. Paul campus. The St. Paul campus had a coal-fired power plant located just east of the academic buildings. It was reached by a spur track that extended beyond the regular St. Paul campus turn loop, and that's where the locomotive delivered coal cars to the power plant and also spent most of its time when parked. On 15th Avenue Southeast, between University Avenue and 4th Street, a spur track went into the University of Minnesota Stores Building, and every once in a while the freight locomotive would make a trip over here to pick up some sort of supplies or deliver supplies. The inner campus line, along with the Como Harriet line, were the two last streetcar operations in the Twin Cities, and they both ended simultaneously on June 18, 1954. The motorman and conductor are shaking hands after the very last trip.